This is Kathy from Gadget Stop 321, and in today's video, I'll be taking a look at Sailor Tokiwamatsu. Now, it's important to note that at one time, this was part of the Sailor Gentle line, which came in those round, short bottles, but now it's being sold as part of the Shikiori line that come in the smaller square bottles. In this video, I'll do a writing sample on Tomoe River paper using a variety of pens and nib sizes ranging from a Pilot Extra Fine to a 1.5 stub. I'll take a look at a writing sample that I did previously on 20 pound copy paper. Then I'll compare Tokiwamatsu to similar inks from my collection. And finally, I'll show the results of my water resistance test. The first writing sample was done with a glass nib dip pen and you can see that the ink came off the nib more heavily at first, but then evened out and came off the nib more uniformly and was very pleasant to write with. The swatch was done with tweezers that are pinched together and dipped in the ink, and you can see from the swatch that it had no trouble grabbing the paper and holding on to it and putting down a nice crisp swatch. The ink was applied to the paper more heavily at first, and you may be able to see there's a bit of red sheen and lightens up a decent amount toward the end of the swatch. So there's a possibility for some nice shading. I'm going to begin with a Pilot 78G Plus with an extra fine steel nib. This is very pleasant in this extra fine nib and the legibility is very nice. I had high hopes for this ink in this pen because I, I had a good experience with it on the other papers that I've tried also. So I, I'm honestly going to say this is smooth. For people who use extra fine nibs, this is smooth. Next I'll be using a Pilot Custom 74 with a fine 14 karat gold nib. As usual, this is very pleasant. Very wet and of course smooth. Next, I'll be using a Sailor Pro Gear Slim with a 14 karat fine nib. This is very pleasant. And it feels quite smooth, smoother than normal for this Pro Gear Slim fine nib. Usually, I feel a decent amount of feedback with this one. But this ink seems to be a pretty wet ink. It was pretty wet in that Custom 74. And so this drier Pro Gear Slim is a nice match for this wet ink. Oh, a little bit of a skip there. But it is smooth. And I don't know, that skip might be... I don't know, I'm not going to make excuses for it. Next, I've got a Sailor 1911 standard with a 14 karat medium nib. Oh, and there was a little bit of a hard start on the scribble there. I'm going to say this is pretty smooth also. This is the kind of smooth that I feel on the Caveco Percao. I can hear it on the paper, but I can't really feel it. It's not glassy smooth. It's not going to, it doesn't feel like the nib's going to fly off the paper, but it's just very pleasant. Next is my Twisby Mini with a fine steel nib. I've been looking forward to trying this nib with this ink. This nib is a little bit drier. I wouldn't call it a dry nib, but it leans toward the dry side. You 
Yeah, this is very smooth. But again, not glassy smooth. I can, I can hear the nib on the paper. Very pleasant. Next, I've got a Pilot Pluminix, and I took the Cursive Medium Steel Nib from my Pilot Metropolitan and installed it on this pen. Uh-oh. A little trouble getting started there. And that I've noticed that sometimes with this nib. I had the same trouble when I used um, one of those Jacquerbon inks, Jacquerbon Blue Plenitude. It would do that exact same thing. But once it gets going, it's very luxurious. Decently wet and very smooth once you get it started. Next is a Caveco Lily Put with a double broad steel nib. Now this is leaning a little more toward being glassy smooth. My nib just feels like it wants to slide off the paper. And finally, I've got my Jinhao X750 with a 1.5 replacement steel nib. Mm. Okay, I'm going to have to re-dip this to get it started, and I think... This uh, ink does have many of the same properties that Jacquerbon Blue Plenitude had. And I'll discuss that in just a moment. Let's finish up this last writing sample. Very luxurious once you get the ink in the nib flowing. All right. While that dries, before I look at the copy paper, I want to discuss a theory I have about this ink. This ink, let's see if I can show it here. I'm going to tip the bottle a bit. Maybe you can see how the ink sticks to the sides of the sample vial here. I tend to think, and I've noticed that when you dip the nib in the ink, this this ink tends to coat the nib like a, like a coat of paint on it. And I think, even though it's a very seems like a very wet ink, it's also very saturated, and I think it just dries up. In the nib slit and but once you get it started flowing it's just a very seems like a well-behaved ink that's my theory okay let's take a look at the 20 pound copy paper this was very pleasant to write with in all the nibs the custom 74 and the sailor 1911 medium were my least favorite they just seem to be a little too wet for copy paper, but looking at it, it doesn't look too bad. Let's see. The pilot here, when you compare the extra fine to the gold fine, you can see that the gold nib, with it being a little wet, wetter, feathers just a tiny bit. The letters look a little more ragged. Still very usable. It's just that I prefer the drier nibs with this ink. The Twisby Mini I really liked. The bleed through isn't too bad even on these wetter nibs. However, every nib did bleed through slightly except for the extra fine, that Pilot extra fine. So this was a very pleasant ink to use on poor quality copy paper. Now Sailor Shikiori 
Tokiwamatsu. I don't know if it will show up accurately on my camera, but it's somewhat of a an olivey green. You can tell that there's some yellow in there. But what sets it apart is this red sheen, and it just gives it a little something extra. The inks from my collection that were similar are my olivey greens range from Venta Carlos, which is a really dark one that has just a little bit of a, a yellow look to it. Tasha Uguisu is an olivey green that is pretty uniform, has not much shading to it. Roaring Klinger Alt Gold Green has quite a bit more yellow, and I would say that Tokiwamatsu would fall in between the Uguisu and the Venta Carlos. And I have a couple other green inks that are close and that they're they're darker inks. Private Reserve Avocado has a little bit of a yellow yellow look to it. And when I first started using this ink, testing it, I thought it would be really close to Diamond Green Black, but Diamond Green Black uh, just doesn't have that yellow look to it. It's got more of the gray to it. It's got that black in it. And it has some sheen, but the sheen is more of a black sheen. This Tokiwamatsu is really a unique ink in my collection. The water resistance test for this one was pretty enjoyable to watch. A lot of green and yellow came up and left quite a bit of blue behind. So there's a decent amount of water resistance if you're using this ink for notes and you don't have to worry about completely losing your information. And finally, the writing sample on Tomoe River was my favorite because of all the, the character that this ink has. Let's see the back of the paper. Only just the beginning of some bleed through on the heaviest part of the swatch. I wouldn't call that bleed through. I'm seeing maybe a, a little of the yellow just almost coming through. There's a decent amount of show through with this being a darker ink on the wider nibs. But it was just, you can see, very enjoyable to write with in all the nibs. I have to say, this is a bit out of the ordinary. I think the Sailor Pro Gear Slim with that fine nib that leans a little on the dry side, it was just very pleasant to write with on this paper. My only concerns with this ink is the tendency for the nib to dry out. And what I typically do with inks like that, I have my little jar of water here at my desk. Just one little dip in the water, just dip the tip of the nib in the water. And once the ink is flowing, it's fine, but there is a tendency for the nib to dry out. But this is such a beautiful ink. These pens were all dipped to do these writing tests, so I'll know a little bit more once I ink up a pen and use it long term. I'm curious to see how this ink will perform in my favorite little tiny converters in my Pilot Pens and my Caveco Sport. Well, if you found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up, and if you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel.